Hi, my name is Caleb Wallace. I'm Nicole Williams. I'm Lucas Sheffelbein. And I'm Morris Richardson. And I'm Riley Weeks. And this is our presentation for the English Department of Talma Gordon First Critical Edition. In this critical edition, we will be examining the short story Talma Gordon by Pauline Hopkins uh, and providing a little bit of annotated and edited context, uh, both all historical, contemporaneous, contemporary, and early. Um, we hope that in doing this, it will make the text a bit clearer and highlight what we think is important. Uh, so as a preface quickly, uh, in a period like the modern day where period or political and social tensions the world over seem to be in a much more dire state than they've been since the end of the Cold War, we all must ask ourselves, what is this, our society built upon? What are the origins of our beliefs? And likewise, what are the origins of our person? What makes us us? And more importantly, who and what is this us in a grander sense? Is it all Americans despite their race or allegiance? Is it the result of a tainted bloodline? The result of American imperialization taking what was Anglo-Saxon and making it something else, something different? Or is it really something that matters at all? Something that we see make, make seem bigger than it truly is because we crave division between our people. In this first critical edition of Talma Gordon, we have collected a plethora of essays, contemporaneous publications, and historical tidbits that we believe will serve to enhance the experience of an already enthralling story concerning the consequences of imperialism left unchecked. In other sections from The Colored American, we find a fascinating connection between this story and those published beside, and through this connection, take a glimpse at a time when Black authors were first beginning to truly emerge and find a voice in America. Within Dr. Bernardi's narratives of domestic imperialism, we see how Hopkins helped to define the role of women in racial relations to, within the United States. And in Jane Nichols' eugenics and the fiction of Pauline Hopkins, we see Hopkins in a different light, not as a supporter of women's rights and anti-imperialization, but as a supporter of eugenics and racial advancement. As a side note, before we fully begin, we cannot give you the full text nor a full rundown of our sections, each one of them in this, it, simply because we don't have the time. If you would like to read the full text, which we highly recommend you do so that you can fully understand what we're discussing, or you'd like to further check out our own sections on this and our contexts, the link will be given as, along with the presentation. Now, on to Nicole. All right, so what I give my presentation on is the uh, historical context uh, for Talma Gordon uh, and sort of a timeline of the late 1890s uh, to the 1900s. So this particular decade is important not only for setting up the context of Talma Gordon, uh, but for detailing the U.S.'s growing imperialism as well as the beginnings of the Jim Crow era. While this is certainly a dark time for African Americans, it is not a period of you know, solely hardship. And as you will see, many African Americans in this period are uh, entering the middle class and seeking justice by forming legal communities. In addition, we see America entering into an age of growing expansionism, one which will not only shape the context of this text, uh, but will also influence the future of our country. So uh, in the interest of time, let's go over quickly uh, what I end up talking about in this presentation. Uh, I talk a bit about the Afro-American League and the roots of the double NCP, of uh, the NAACP, uh, I talk a bit about Plessy versus Ferguson, how it was upheld in the Supreme Court and how it sort of reinforces the Jim Crow era. Uh, and the election of William McKinley and the Spanish-American War uh, and the territory that was granted to us uh, at the end of the Spanish-American War, as well as the annexation of the independent Republic of Hawaii. Uh, and you know, sort of how this era is marking the rise of imperialism. Uh, and indeed, you know, like some important companies and some important developments in the middle class development of African Americans during this time period. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, the Philippine American War and of how our colonies uh, have begun to fight back against uh, the American imperialism of this time. While I can't go over all of this, um, it's a fairly interesting prospect. Um, yeah. And uh, it kind of goes to highlight some of the context surrounding this decade and sort of like the influences that might show up in the piece, Talma Gordon. So my section was on the contemporaneous publications around Talma Gordon. So what I did was focus on the magazine that Talma Gordon was published within The Colored American. So Talma Gordon was published in the October 1900 edition of the, this magazine, The Colored American which was published from 1900 to 1909. And it was a magazine that worked to support and its target audience was really the African-American population. 
Um, it really wanted to showcase the developing field of African American literature and really give that community some strength and some spotlight. So the most prolific writer of the first four years of the publication was Pauline Hopkins herself. She wrote a lot of short stories, editorials, essays, and three serialized novels. Um, and in these first four years, Colored American reached a peak circulation of more than 17,000, which made it the largest um, publication of, Af of an African-American magazine until the NAACP's crisis took it over much later. So it's estimated that despite its target audience of really being the African-American population, approximately one third of the magazine's audience was actually white, which showed how far the magazine reached. Um, but this would also kind of lead to its demise later on as Hopkins and others were pressed as the, as the white audience of the magazine grew to be less aggressive and like weaker with their political stances, which much of these early issues of the magazine were based on. And so in 1904, Pauline Hopkins um, would stop working for the magazine due to health issues. And it just kind of pittered out for the last five years of its, of its existence. It, it had much less political um, sway. It was more centrist and unoffensive. And in 1909, W.E.D. Dubois is quoted as saying that the magazine became so conciliatory, innocuous, uninteresting, that it died a peaceful death, almost unnoticed by the public. So what, what else is in this October 1900 edition of The Colored American alongside Talma Gordon? There are some interesting sections. There's the famous men of the Negro race, which gave biographical information of notable people of color of the time. There is the helpful thoughts for young men and help and suggestions for young women, which as the name suggests, give tips for the younger readers of the magazine, as well as other more, and in addition to these, there are other more long form works published, a mystery story in the form of The Stress of Impulse by Maitland Leroy Osborne is published, giving a few chapters of a fascinating kidnapping and love story. Uh, the Tyranny of the South is a heart-wrenching description of inequality present in the Southern states in these times. And then you get the, the really sweet love story of Throne in Favor by Charles Stewart, um, which shows just how varied the Colored Americans articles could be. And finally, it ends with some really interesting advertisements presented at the end of the magazine, showing just all of the different varied takes and, and thoughts presented within the Colored American magazine that Talma Gordon was published when. Uh, for my uh, contribution to this, what I did was I talked about the other short stories and authors who published work in the same time as uh, uh, Tom McGordon was published uh, in the same decade. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tom McGordon was published in 1900. Um, uh, in this section, I wrote that uh, in the decade leading up to and following 1900, many realist American authors, women writers, and African American authors published successful and thoughtful works. There was also a variety of infamous, infamous books and noteworthy best-selling novels sold in 1900. Uh, if you'd like to read about the other authors, I encourage you to check out our original work. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to focus on the other realist authors. Uh, Tom Gordon was published during a time period that literary scholars identify as the second phase of American realism. Raphael Walker, a professor of literature at the University of Maryland and author of the second phase of realism in American fiction, The Rise and Fall of the Social Self, says that the, during the early 20th century, novelists participate in this culture-wide effort to transform realism and redefine modern subjectivity in the US. A number of different authors wrote about America through realist literature through a variety of different perspectives. Uh, I then go on to say that in the same year, Mark Twain published The Man That Corrupted at Hadleybury and other stories. Just one year later, Edith Warden published Crucial Instances and would later publish The Son of Man and other short stories in 1904. Uh, o. Henry published his collection of short stories, The Four Million, in 1906, which included his infamous short story, The Gift of the Magi. All of these authors were important to the realism movement. To quote Walker, they, the contemporary realist authors, form part of a long realist tradition that originates across the Atlantic and, as many, my concluding paragraph suggests, went on to have a significant influence on the next generation of fiction. Like Pauline Hopkins, 
Realist authors such as O. Henry, Mark Twain, and Eve Warden wrote short stories at the beginning of the 20th century as a part of the realist movement. All right, and so for my part of this presentation, I covered the contemporary literary criticism, which focuses on the more recent talk about Thelma Gordon and her works. So a quick summary of this section, since we have to keep it within the time limit, would be to say that the most common elements to critical reviews in more recent time periods of Thelma Gordon discuss the imperialism and Western expansion in the realm of African American culture that is unique to Pauline Hopkins' writings. While the articles gathered here span from the influences upon writing that Hopkins has to the effects it has had upon modern attempts to, at multiculturalism in the American canon, all are modern, which means for our definition after 1990s, reviews of the focus story. When reading or rereading Talma Gordon, these articles help give the reader some nuanced context and lenses through which to understand the story anew. Collectively, we can read the text in a larger spectrum via understanding a relationship of Talma Gordon within the canon in much the same way Talma herself fits into elite society. So some of the different articles that we talk about is Laura Bailing's genetic Multi generic multiculturalism, hybrid texts, and cultural contacts. We also talked about a and summarized Jill Bergman's Everything We Hope She'd Be Contending Forces in Hopkins Scholarships. Uh, we also go on to talk about um, Dr. Bernardi's Narratives in Domestic Imperialism, The African American Home and the Colored American Magazine, and the novels of Pauline Hopkins in 1900 through 1993 or 1903. And we also go on to talk about a summary of Sigrid Anderson Cordell's The Case is Very Black Against Her, Pauline Hopkins and the Politics of Racial Ambiguity at the Colored American Magazine, which I am going to use as an example of one of our summaries. So in her article on Pauline Hopkins, Talma Gordon, Anderson argues strongly against the possible contradictions that have been discussed as she works to put Hopkins' short story into context of the time and the publication that it was interested in. She tries to strives to show the reader that Talma Gordon was a masterpiece that called attention to issues at the time without compromising for the sake of the white or uncolored reader. Um, and this is just a short overview of that specific article. And then we go on to talk about various other articles. And once again, just due to the time constrictions, we do not have time to go through all of them. And we strongly encourage you to go back and look through at the end on your own if you are incurious in any way. And that will do it for this presentation. Again, that was Talma Gordon, the first critical edition presented by uh, Caleb Wallace, Lucas Scheffelby, Nicole Williams, Riley Weeks, and Morris Richardson, uh, all English majors. This is a presentation for the English department after all. Um, if you're looking to read the full text, it is linked uh, below, as will be the rest of our presentation. And we thank you all for taking the time to view. Thanks. <laughs>